Hey, everybody. You are about to hear a brief retelling of the movie Labor Pains. Enjoy the movie. An employee at a publishing company named Thea had to cope with her supervisor, Jerry, complaining to her about her frequent tardiness after arriving late for work. In addition, he informs her that he discovered several mistakes in a paper she previously sent in. Jerry tells her that Greg, the intern, was the one who saw the mistakes as she attempts to justify herself. Additionally, he warns his secretary that Greg or someone else may replace her if she continues to make similar errors. She apologizes and promises to help in any way she can. Jerry asks her to assist him in cleaning his dog right then. She accepts to help, and as she's doing it, Lisa, a friend, enters the bathroom. Thea bemoans her employment, but also states that she is unable to quit since she needs the money to support Emma, her sister. Thea swiftly interrupts the dog as he is chewing a bar of soap on the floor while they are still conversing. Later that day, Nick, the company's accountant, arrives late for a meeting to discuss the next book they'll publish. In addition to complaining about it, Jerry says the accountant is divorcing. After a time, the meeting gets underway, and Jerry switches the topic to discuss the strategy for the next intercompany softball game. Nick cuts him off in the middle of his sentence, saying they ought to be discussing a special opportunity he discovered. Following their meeting, he claims that he read Susie's manuscript and believes her novel is excellent enough to be published. Susie is one of their writers. Jerry, though, claims he has no interest in it. Jerry's dog collapses next to him shortly after, and as he lifts him up to see what's wrong, the dog throws up on him. Then, glancing at Thea, he queries what she served him. Thea visits his workplace later that day to express his regret for what transpired with his dog. He assures her that there won't be any issues and lets her take his dog to the hospital for an appointment. Thea explains she has plans with her boyfriend on the appointed day and won't be accessible, but Jerry is adamant, so she has to comply. After that, she runs into Lisa in the bathroom and begins to gripe about her employer. Jerry hears her speech as he enters the bathroom, including her insulting remarks. When he approaches her, Thea is rendered mute. She goes to his office to apologize for what she said, but he tells her that they cannot continue to collaborate if she despises him. He dismisses her right away, and despite her pleas for him to reconsider, she tells him a falsehood that she is pregnant. Jerry seems puzzled right away and walks out of his office for the legal department. When he comes back, he asks Thea when she's due because she's still at the office. He informs her that the legal department has recommended him not to terminate her owing to her condition when she states that she would be giving birth in six months. She praises him for his change of heart, but on her way out of his office, Kristen, a pregnant employee in the legal department, congratulates her. Lisa is astonished when and the receptionist, tells everyone about it as soon as they enter the lobby. Lisa is tricked into believing the lie by Thea, who also gets her to say that her buddy is engaged. The two pals talk about what happened at work later that day in a pub. Lisa clarifies that in order to avoid being perceived as abnormal, she had to fabricate the news of her friend's engagement. Thea's buddy encourages her to play along for the time being so that she may later declare that the warning was false, even if it appears that she may have to live a lie. Just before heading out to her sister's school, Thea consents to do this. She arrives late for a meeting with Emma's teacher, who has already departed the school, when she gets there. As they reach home, her sister informs her that her instructor wants her to start taking cookery lessons after school instead of tennis. She apologizes to Emma for being late. Emma objects to Thea's claim that it won't be feasible because playing tennis will help her obtain a college scholarship. Greg stops Thea at work the next day and inquires as to why her stomach hasn't gotten any larger. As he attempts to infer that she is lying, Lisa arrives to both defend her friend and get him to go. She adds she's probably simply lucky. The next day at work, Greg accuses Thea once more of lying about her pregnancy, but Lisa turns up. After work, she makes the decision to go her companion shopping. When they arrive to the store, Lisa snatches a mannequin's artificial maternity tummy. Although her buddy suggests Thea should start wearing it before others start to suspect her, Thea doesn't think it's appropriate. When Lisa offers Thea the fake tummy after they've finished shopping, she first claims she doesn't want Emma to see it. Her companion, nevertheless, persuades her to bring it home. When Thea wears the false belly the next day and leaves for work, her landlord is surprised to learn that she is expecting a child. He congratulates her and advises her to pay the rent she is now behind on gradually. When Lisa comes to work, she appears amazed by how her friend's narrative suddenly seems plausible because of the false belly. Jerry says he's taking a few weeks off to take care of his dog at a meeting that day. He hands Nick the reins and instructs him not to screw things up while he's away as he concludes his speech. Following their encounter, Lisa and Thea begin discussing how to stop lying about being pregnant. Nick interrupts them shortly after, asking Thea to accompany him to a meeting. She accepts, and he informs her that they will be seeing Susie to discuss her novel while they are on their way. He believes the book would be a success and claims that it is about the true difficulties of being pregnant. He continues by saying that Susie needs more motivation to work for the organization and that Thea, being pregnant, is in an excellent position to assist in persuading the writer. Additionally, he instructs her to act as an editor as that is what he told Susie. 
Nick tries in vain to persuade Susie throughout the meeting, but as Thea begins to discuss how she appreciates the book since it is honest about pregnancy, Susie appears pleased and says she'll give it some thought. Thea informs Lisa that she cannot continue to lie about the pregnancy when they get back to work. Nick, on the other hand, phones her and offers her a position as editor for the business. Thea appears astonished by this, but she claims she can't take it since it will prevent her from speaking the truth. He keeps trying to persuade her, telling her that she will become wealthy and have her own office. However, she ultimately agrees to take it because Emma may really benefit from the money. After that, he hands her Susie's book so she may review it. Miles, her boyfriend, forbids her from reading it when she gets home. When Nick finds out that she hasn't really read the book the next day, he becomes enraged and storms out of her office asking for an update on the review. While Thea recognizes her error, Lisa enters her new office while she is considering her options. Greg enters to accuse Thea of fabricating a pregnancy in order to obtain a promotion before they have a chance to speak. He gladly accepts when she offers him the position of secretary rather than rejecting it. After that, she reads Susie's book at work for the entire day. When she's done, she goes to see Nick to compliment him on the book. She gives him advice on how to organize the chapters as well. She apologizes for not treating things seriously earlier and is relieved that she has completed the book, which Nick finds encouraging. Following their workday, Nick and Thea deepen their relationship. She discovers that Jerry and Nick are connected and that the company is being run by a family. She also informs him about their parents' accident-related deaths and how she is now responsible for looking after her sister. Later, Nick tells her about Susie's pool party and reminds her to invite Miles, her boyfriend. The next day, Emma enters the room to check out her party attire. She covers herself with a towel right away to hide her growing baby belly from her sister. Miles is taken to Susie's house for the celebration shortly after she leaves. He jumps into the pool right away after she introduces him to her co-workers when they arrive. He invites her to join him in the pool a little later, but she feels that it would be inappropriate to do so, especially in front of Nick and Susie. He nevertheless pushes her into the pool in spite of this, shocking everyone with what transpired. The next day at work, Thea tells Lisa how humiliated she is by her boyfriend's actions. Additionally, she claims that since then, she has declined to answer his calls since she is no longer interested in the partnership. She continues, saying that she also finds it bothersome that Nick believes Miles is her child's father. Lisa claims Nick is the only one who believes she is truly capable of doing meaningful work, despite the fact that she doesn't think it should worry her. Nick invites a few expectant ladies to a book review of Susie's later that day. They don't appear interested in it at all, but as Thea talks about the book, they start to become intrigued. She finds out shortly after that Emma is waiting for her to sign some school paperwork in the foyer. She covers up her false bump and goes to meet her sister promptly. She rushes to introduce Emma to Nick as he's already there. Emma seems astonished to see Thea's bump after signing the paperwork, but her sister is able to usher her out before she can make a scene. Thea explains why she had to do it once they're outside, but her sister still doesn't think she should have lied about something like that. Lisa also suggests that Thea come open about the fictitious pregnancy the next day. Thea is about to speak when she notices Nick approaching and quickly switches the subject. She tells him about the email she got from a prominent show producer who wants to promote Susie's book as he walks into her office. This makes him extremely happy, but not long after, Jerry calls to caution him against taking on any more jobs. Nick doesn't appear to care, though. Thea, in the meantime, decides to steal a larger tummy and makes a baby-related purchase while perusing the aisles. Later on, she and Nick begin working on book promotions, and Susie offers that she participate in the book cover picture session. Nick and Susie talk Thea into doing it even though she doesn't think it's a good idea at first. Emma is taken aback later that day to see her sister taking some vitamins intended for expectant mothers. The next day at work, Thea also started discussing her pregnancy issues with Kristen. Nick enters with a cut on his nose as they're at it. He tells Thea that he just assaulted Miles in public because he was kissing another woman, and Kristen excuses them. Admiring this, Thea declares that she is no longer with Miles and that he is not even her baby's father. Nick is happy to learn that her father is no longer involved in her life and informs her that being a single mother is okay. Lisa stops over shortly to visit her pal. Thea is adamant that she should notify Nick about the fictitious pregnancy before it's too late, despite her repeated encouragement to do so. She goes to Emma's tennis lesson later that day, but she isn't there. Thea accuses her sister of lying about where she goes after school when she returns home. Emma claims to have been employed in a restaurant, but her sister doesn't seem to be very happy about it. She quickly puts on her fake tummy before seeing Nick, who arrives at the house shortly after and asks to see her. She's shocked to find herself on Susie's book cover when he claims he's come to show her a copy. She asks him if he wants to go for a stroll with her as he is about to depart. He nods, and a little later, as they watch some kids play at the park, Nick declares that he hopes to have kids of his own someday. At that moment, Thea admits to like him, and he reciprocates, but they decide to go slowly. 
Emma phones Thea the following day to report an emergency at their house, but when she gets there, she discovers that her aunt, who recently learned that Emma is pregnant, is hosting a surprise baby shower. Thea gladly accepts the many presents that are brought to her for the infant. Lisa enters a little while later and requests to speak with her buddy. Emma follows them into her room and bemoans the fact that her sister's deception is now out of hand. Thea doesn't see anything wrong with what she's doing, but Lisa also thinks it's the truth. Emma suddenly loses her temper, rips out the prosthetic stomach, and destroys it. Thea goes to the living room to see if anything can fit inside her dress as a baby bump because she doesn't have a bump for the book launch later that day, shocking everyone at the party. After stuffing a balloon into her frock, she storms off to the launch. Everything appears to be going okay when she arrives until Jerry arrives and says he would want to deliver a different book. They fight because Nick is weary of being told what to do. The balloon in Thea's tummy bursts as she intervenes to stop them. This shocks everyone here, even Nick and Susie. Nick exits in a furious manner after she apologizes and explains why she had to do it. That evening, she phones Nick many times after she gets home, but he never picks up. A few days later, Lisa stops over to see how her friend is doing. She reports that Nick has also resigned and that everyone at work is still talking about what Thea did. When Thea asks if he said anything before heading off, her pal replies that he didn't say anything. Then she inquires about Susie's book sales, to which Lisa responds that they have been appalling. Thea visits Emma's school the next day to offer her apology for being a poor role model. Emma is delighted that her sister would finally be able to attend a culinary school, as she had always desired. A few days later, Thea begins delivering copies of Susie's books to many locations. In order to earn Claire, a show presenter, a slot on her show to talk about the book, she also continues giving her various meals. Everything goes smoothly, and the host decides to read the book aloud on the program. In order to get Susie to go on the show, she uses this to go see her. Susie finds it disappointing to see Thea because of what she did, but she also views it as a fantastic chance. She claims she won't be able to attend the performance, though, as she begins to have contractions. Thea makes her way around asking pregnant ladies to accompany her to the performance. Additionally, she asks Emma to assist her in persuading Nick to go, and despite his initial bewildered expression, he agrees. He doesn't come in time, though, so the producer asks Thea to take his place. Eventually, she and the other expectant ladies are escorted to the platform. Nick enters shortly after and hears her gushing over the book. In addition, she explains that Nick is the one who brought the novel to life. Claire urges Nick to get up so he may be clapped as she believes he is in the crowd. After that, he is handed a microphone so he may discuss the book. He looks at Thea after complimenting her on the book and adds, I've learned that loving someone is a leap of faith and that you should forgive them for whatever they've done. After Claire finishes the performance, Nick goes to see Thea up on stage. The presenter reappears as they are getting into conversation and informs them that Susie's book has sold a ton of copies on the website for her program. Thea praises Nick for believing in her, and they both appear thrilled about it. After that, he expresses his forgiveness to her for what she'd done and says he would love to collaborate with her on another book. A few months later, Thea and Nick are wed, and she begins experiencing labor pains at work. The situation quickly gets out of hand, and Nick is forced to accompany his wife to the hospital to give birth to their child as their co-workers laugh at them.